Hello everyone, welcome back. Today I want to talk to you guys about um, uh, raising goldfish uh, as a survival food, okay? Now, you might say, hey, wait a second. Uh, you expect me to live on these little goldfish that are one inch or two inches uh, big? Uh, and the answer is that the natural size of goldfish uh, is for them to grow up to 12 inches big okay so so when you look at the little goldfish in the fish store those are still babies okay uh goldfish naturally grow to about 12 inches uh long um and uh the cool thing about goldfish is that people that raise goldfish will tell you that they are probably the most uh indestructible fish okay now you might say, "Hey, when I was a kid, I used to win these little goldfish at the, uh, you know, at the local fair, and they would usually die within a week." Okay. Uh, well, here's the thing: any other fish would have probably died within a few hours. Okay? Uh, goldfish are, are extremely tough fish. Um, they're able to live through the hot summers. They're able to live through cold wi winters when the uh, uh, w when the pond freezes over. Okay, uh, they've got some excellent survival uh, uh, traits that have developed in their bodies over millions of years. Um, in the in the winter time, what happens is their uh, um, when the um, um, temperature drops, okay, uh, they they go into a uh, into a uh, a state called torpor, uh, which we would kind of associate with hibernation. But it's really not hibernation because that is like very that is like a biologically defined term. Uh, so it's not technically hibernation. But it, but we, but to us from the outside looking in, uh, it will look similar. Now when they're in the state of topper, they're still alert. Okay, so if something comes by that's you know uh, predatory, they'll move. Okay, but but basically they they go to the bottom of the pond. They'll go to the, the, the coldest area, I'm sorry, the warmest area of the pond, which is usually the bottom, um, and they, they're just not going to move a whole lot. They're going to be conserving energy, um, and that's how they'll survive uh, through the winter. I'm sure you can see a bullfish right over there. Right. Um, so, so, uh, so, the, so, so they'll they'll go into this uh, low activity state. They also have these um, these proteins. Uh, basically, they have like these antifreeze proteins um in their um in their system that prevent freezing okay um so that's another thing that helps them survive and what they are also able to do is convert the waste products in their body um into alcohol okay and then what they, what happens is once they convert the waste products in their body into alcohol uh, what will happen is then they're able to rip the oxygen. Out. They're able to break it down, rip the oxygen out, and and survive on that. So so goldfish are excellent survival fish. Um, and the great thing is like you don't need to feed them, right? If you have a pond like this, right? So this one's about three thousand gallons. Um, okay. And here's the thing: uh, this pond over here kind of was like formed by accident. You know, basically I had dug out this tactical trench here. And I needed uh, basically a place for the rainwater to go, so that's how I, I, um, um, you know, I, I created this. Okay, so it's about something like um, 90 feet long. Okay, and it curves around, um, and it's, uh, you know, you know. I mean, initially I, tr I did try to dr drain it out and dry it, but it's just it wouldn't do that. Um, so eventually I figured out, hey, uh, let's make the best out of this and put some fish in there. Um, so, so, so in selecting a pond, you need a pond that's going to stay wet throughout the summertime. That's not going to evaporate. Uh, and in the, that, and that is deep enough, right? You, at least about, uh, at least a foot deep, preferably two feet deep, but at least a foot deep so that it, so it doesn't completely freeze freeze through right because what happens is in the winter time only like the first even like when it's like negative uh, 10 degrees here uh only the like the um, about the top one or two inches freeze up right so max the most it will freeze is about two inches and the water underneath it uh is above freezing okay so that's just how water freezes 
uh, and then towards the deepest part of the pond, and this one's, I think the max depth here is about two feet, uh, you know, it's going to be a little bit warmer, okay, so that's what the fish are going to do, they're going to seek out the warmest point of this pond. Um, so the, 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 the good thing about goldfish is in, in a pond like this, um, you don't have to feed them because the mosquitoes are going to lay eggs here and other bugs, uh, and they're going to eat the bugs, okay? All right, so, 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 the, the, you know, this is a self, you know, it, it's very easy to build a self-sustaining pond uh, because all the insects are going to come and lay eggs there like the mosquitoes, and then the, 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 the small goldfish are going to eat the mosquitoes, okay? Uh, and that's, you know, and you'll, never, you'll never have to feed your goldfish, okay? Um, and then as they get bigger, right, like as it, when they start getting up to, let's say, uh, uh, you know, uh, past six inches, then what they'll also start doing is they'll also start eating the baby goldfish, okay? Because, you know, uh, gold, fish are, are, are cannibals. So as they get bigger and bigger, um, aside from eating, like, there's a whole school of goldfish over there. I don't know if you can see it through the muddy water. Um, but uh, there's a bunch of goldfish under the water over there. So, so what happens is the, um, the, 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 the larger goldfish will eventually start eating the little baby goldfish, which kind of self-regulates the, the population because what happens is the um, you know, goldfish lay like something like 300 to 1,000 eggs at a time. Okay? So uh, initially when I, when I started this goldfish project uh, about, I don't know, something like, eight months like not even like almost six months ago uh, i wasn't 100 percent sure if if it was going to be able to sustain the fish right i didn't know if the oxygen levels were going to be sufficient because I, this is not filtered okay and there's no aeration or anything like that so so basically the only source of water here is rainwater right the, basically the what the, the you know the, it rains and the water just drains in here so that's the only you know this is only supplied uh by rainwater um, so I wasn't sure if it was going to if it was going to be able to sustain fish, uh, but it's now been six months and I have seen that the goldfish have actually laid eggs. Right, uh, I've got little baby goldfish swimming around in there. Uh, let me see if I can find any. Uh, show you, but that, but I noticed uh, I just saw one darting over there. Um, but there's little baby goldfish in there now. Right, so so and, uh, so it took them. You know, at, at the point where they're laying eggs and uh, it's already been four weeks with the little baby goldfish swimming around and actually I can even see there's a, another small baby goldfish let me see if I can zoom in and you guys can see it I don't know if you guys are going to be able to see it but there's a little baby goldfish swimming around over there that's actually tiny which means that this is not from four weeks ago this is a a, a recent hatch so they're, they're continuing to hatch out uh, goldfish okay so this is going to be self-sustaining, okay? Uh, so that's kind of like the point where once I see that there's baby goldfish in there, I know I have a successful pond um, where that, that's just going to keep, that, where it's going to be able to just sustain itself, okay? Now, the other thing I've done is I've added some um, um, uh, uh, rosy red minnows in there, right? Uh, and part of the reason why I added the rosy reds uh, is because it, it's going to, basically, the when these goldfish get bigger, they'll be able to... Um, eat the rosy reds because then the rosy reds which never grow more than two inches are also going to multiply and that will be another food source for the larger goldfish um you know besides the baby goldfish okay uh, there's a rosy red right over there little rosy that's swimming around uh, there he goes you can see that little rosy swimming right there okay so the rosy reds also again are also able to survive uh through the through the winter um and in the summer, in the summertime, what's going to happen is as it heats up, as it gets warmer in here, the, the oxygen levels also tend to drop. Now, there was a period of about um, four weeks this past summer where there was no rain, and I did see that the pond level that the, that the pond level dropped, and I did see that the goldfish were struggling a little bit. I, I, like I saw them come to the surface, right? They were trying to, uh, for whatever reason, they were trying to come to the surface and they were kind of like trying to take air closer to the surface uh they probably would have been okay but i decided to just help them out a little bit so i just ran a hose and just and just supplemented it with some water when we had a you know a drought uh and as soon as i added some water i saw that the goldfish were fine i probably didn't need to do it uh but that that was like a little something i did to kind of just help them out especially since it was like the, the first time i had goldfish in here you know 
Um, so I, I, I didn't, I wanted to make sure that they all survived. Um, so, um, again, because goldfish will grow up to 12 inches, right. For an HTF apocalypse type of situation. Uh, this, this is a very feasible, uh, food source, right. Um, so what you would do is like find a natural pond in the area, um, verify that it is going to, uh, you know, basically not completely evaporate uh in the summertime okay um and you know you want it to you know through summertime you want it to stay at least uh, at least 12 inches preferably 15 inches deep okay oh, there's some goldfish right there and there's surface just hanging out there you go they're about three inches now so you want to verify that your pond is going to um not evaporate in the uh in the summertime and and that it's at least 12 inches deep so it's not going to completely freeze through uh in the winter okay and what you do is you just go to the to, to the pet store right uh and you get the goldfish the goldfish uh if you get the small ones they're like 20 cents each i got the slightly bigger ones they were 40 cents each right so that they were like closer to an inch um rather than like the half inch ones um so i got like 60 of the of the um um, 60 of the uh, 40 cent goldfish, but you can get the 20 cent ones. Uh, and what you could do is if you got like a couple of ponds in your area that, that meet this criteria that you know are not going to evaporate through the winter time, through the summertime, and are not going to uh, deep enough that they're not going to freeze through in the winter, what you do is you take this, you know, you spend like $10 and, and you drop, you know, whatever, like 30 goldfish in one pond, 30 goldfish in another pond, 30 goldfish in another pond. And now you know that those ponds have fish, okay? Uh, and this is something that nobody else is going to know, okay? Uh, because you have seeded this pond, okay? Um, so you'll always be able to go over there down the road and access those fish. Now, how fast do grow, goldfish grow? I mean, within, in the first year, because they grow fast when, they're, when, they're, when, they're, when they hatch out, um, so within the first year, they'll probably grow up to about three to four inches, right? And then after that, they grow about an inch a year. So it'll take about six years before you get your goldfish up, you know, up to about eight inches, you know, eight to 10 years before you get them up, up to about a, uh, um, you know, up, up to about 12 inches big, which now you got something that's, that you can really eat, um, but this is like a, a really cheap way to like, you know, like if you got ponds in your area, you know, you can, you can see these ponds and then you, you'll have access to food that nobody else knows. Now, the way you would catch, how do you, how do you get to catch these goldfish, right? Because I don't know if you can put a fishing line in there and fish them. What I would do is I would just net them, right? If I wanted to catch goldfish, especially in a pond like this, I would just kind of like run them into the narrow area over here and then just go in with 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 a fish net and just 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 net them out uh oh, there's a bunch of them right there's a few of them right there um now the other cool thing is you can see that this water is muddy okay uh goldfish are dirty water fish they will survive in muddy water although you don't want it to be like super like 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 you don't want to like just you don't want to excavate a pond out let it fill up with rainwater and then just drop the fish and you want to give the pond a little bit of time to settle Okay, but you know, uh, but like the, the muddy level that you see right here, this it, this is just fine. You know, this is fine. Fish will be very comfortable in this. Now, the other thing that you're gonna that you can put in here um, is once I once I get this fish population up, right? Um, I you know what I what I'm also thinking of doing is putting a few koi fish in there. Those are like those beautiful Japanese fish. Um, they're primarily or ornamental. They do grow up to three feet long. Uh, that a pond this size, 3,000 gallons. I mean, I, I would, I mean, I would, would probably only start off with like four of them. I'm primarily doing it just because I think it would look cool. I'd be, it'd be, you know, it's the nice to look at. It would be a cool project. Um, but, uh, the, the, the koi fish, although they'll survive the winters and the summers, then they're definitely not as tough as the goldfish. Okay. And also they're, they're, they're kind of, they're a lot bigger. Um, so they're, they're going to feed on the goldfish. So you got to have a lot of fish in there for them to feed on. Um, so that's, a, but I'm saying that's another option. If you have a big enough pond, um, you know, you can put koi fish in there. Um, I think uh, there's, uh, you can also look up native, uh, fish, native pond fish in your area, and you can go to a hatchery and, and get them. Uh, I am planning to get some blue nose minnows and, uh, 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 mud, um, muddy minnows uh to also supplement in here just so that it'll be like another food source uh for the goldfish as they get bigger 
Uh, and again, the other cool thing is that this, this is going to be self-sustaining. Once I seed this, uh, you know, all I got to do is just, you know, at that point, all, all I got to do is just come and look at the goldfish. Okay. Uh, I don't have to feed them on a regular basis. Uh, you know, I'm getting like cold water fish, uh, that can survive through the winter and through the summer. Um, and, and, and it'll, it'll just be self-sustaining sustaining. and it is also a way, uh, to, um, uh, to uh, it's a way to c control the mosquitoes, right? Because this pond creates lots of mosquitoes, so it's a good source of mosquito control. Uh, I think I just saw a little little baby fry. The baby fish are called fry, so I just saw one swimming through there. So that's really good. The fact that they're, that they're making babies. Um, and this is I'm only about f five to six months into this six months into this project. Um, so, uh, you know, I just reached the point where I, when, when I saw the, the baby hatchlings swimming around that I know that this is a successful, uh, project over here. Um, so, uh, yeah, the other thing, like I said, you can go to a hatchery. Uh, I, I can't like, because, because I can't put something like trout in here, right? Because the pond's too small. Trout are need like fresh water. So th this pond would have to be like like fresh, like, like fed by a stream or something. Right. So, so you can't, I can't put trout in here. Um, so I have to p pick out fish that can pretty much survive in, in still water. Um, and goldfish are the toughest. Okay. They're the toughest. Uh, and the great thing is you don't have to travel far to find them. You just go to your local pet store. They sell them really cheap as feeder fish, right? Because a lot of people use them to feed other larger aquarium fish so you, you buy them for like 20 to 40 cents per fish um and you stock your pond and you just you know and, and then you know from you just let the system grow on its own from there all right so hope you guys enjoyed the video and i'll talk to you all soon hey everyone i was able to get a better picture of the of the uh, goldfish so you can see that uh, there's like two big goldfish i mean they're like three inches and next to them like swimming next to them are the um um, what do you call it? The rosy reds. So this morning, uh, I don't think you could see them that well. Actually, there's a whole school of rosy reds coming up on the left now. But you can see, uh, actually, we got three goldfish on the water to the left, and then there's a, a few of them. There's another three to the right. They're just hanging out. They just sit there. So unless they're hungry, they don't move around too much. You know, and like I said, I don't feed these guys. Uh, they just eat the bugs and uh, whatever else falls in there. Oh, there's some more roses over here. So it's nice to have a pond with some activity in it. Talk to you all soon.